Hello. I have three books for you today, my friends. The first book is called Everywhere Wonder. The second book is called A Day So Gray. And the last book is called The Three Billy Goats Gruff. The first book is called Everywhere Wonder. And it's about all the wonderful things in the world, big and small, if only you take the time to notice them. Are you ready? Good. Everywhere Wonder, words by Matthew Swanson and pictures by Robbie Bear. Look at all those books he has. Oh my goodness. And there's a Dalmatian. Ruff. I have a story to share. It is a little gift from me to you. You might not know it, but you have a story too. You'll find it in the things you stop to notice. I notice the Dalmatian and I notice the trees. And I notice a little boy reading a book. The world is full of people and places and things, all of them interesting, all of them beautiful. You never know what you might see or where your mind might take you. So keep your eyes wide open as you go. Are your eyes wide open? As big as they can get. In Egypt, there are pyramids. Do you see the little boy? Look, right there. He's riding a camel. Keep your eyes wide open for that little boy. In Arizona, there are canyons. Do you see the little boy? Look, 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 look. Right there. In the jungles of Brazil, there are leaves so plentiful and green that light can barely reach the ground below. Do you see the little boy? He has binoculars on his face, look. He's looking at the monkey. <laughs> and look at that big old bug. In the high hills of Japan are gardens full of wind-worn rocks and clean white sand, but not a single flower. Not one. Do you see the little boy in this picture? It's kind of hard to see. He's not in the sand. Look all the way up here in the stairs. There are his legs. He's sitting on the stairs. In Kenya, there are hot, dry savannas filled with zebras and blue wildebeest. There he is in the tree, relaxing. In Alaska, there are cold, wet waters filled with seals and sockeye salmon. I see seals, I see jellyfish, I see salmon, and I see a boat with a little boy. There's the little boy. And a plane. In the middle of the coral sea, there is a roaring storm that no one will ever hear. There's a little boy, help, help. On the near side of the moon, there is a quiet footprint that no rains will ever wash away. There's the little boy with a jet pack. And look, there's you all the way on earth.
in Sheboygan, there is a tractor mechanic named Shirley who has 37 friends and ice cream. On the North Pole, there is a cold and lonesome bear wishing for some company. You want to go see him, of course, to let him know he's not alone, but your bike won't get you there and back by bedtime. Still, you noticed him, didn't you? He walked off of this page and into your head. Now he is part of your story. There are other wonders yet to find, not so far from where you are right now. They too are interesting. They too are beautiful. Stop to really look and you will see them. What do you see on this page? I see a big blue balloon. Did you notice it? Do you think if I turn the page, you'll remember what it looks like? And the highest part of the tree is an unexpected gift. Do you see it? Look, it's the balloon, a blue balloon that must have slipped from someone's fingers. In the deepest part of the pool is sunken treasure, a shiny dime that must have tumbled from someone else's pocket. Will you save it or spend it? Or leave it there for someone else to find. If you ever want to sound like you're underwater, we could just talk like this and it sounds like you've got bubbles coming from your mouth. Look at all that soup in the grocery store, our aisles and shelves and stacks of cans. You have to look so carefully to find the one you want. In your bowl of steaming soup is just one noodle that doesn't match the others. Where do you think it came from? Do you see the one noodle that's different than all the others? Right there. You see it? X marks the noodle. On the playground is a sturdy line of bright black ants carrying their supper home. All of the ants have leaves. Oh, except this ant found a Cheerio. Under the bridge is a gently rolling river floating a blue glass of bottle. Excuse me, floating a blue glass bottle out to sea. There it is. Perhaps it holds a message. Who can say? Who could it be for? In the busy town are sidewalks full of swiftly moving people who somehow never seem to collide. I see a young man in a black t-shirt with spiky hair. I see a young man in a green shirt who's sitting in a wheelchair. I see a little girl in a pink dress who's pointing up, up, up at the fountain. Who else do I see? I see a little black boy in a red shirt with a Dalmatian. There's the boy in the Dalmatian. There's the boy with the spiky hair. There's the boy in the wheelchair. And there's the little girl pointing at the statue. In the quiet countryside are miles of open, empty roads that somehow never seem to end. Where do they go? Someday you may find out. In the hallway is a spotted dog that turns golden as the sun sets through the window. 
in the bedroom is a doorknob that makes rainbows when the reading lamp clicks on. Now the lamp is off and the moon is up. You close your eyes and see them again, the things you noticed today. All of these things together are your story. Dream with them a while. When you wake up in the morning, open your eyes and open your window and let your story out into the world. He's drawing all of the things he saw. See a squid and a bird and a sphinx and balloons and the pyramids and a rocket ship and a bike. It is a little gift from you to me. Now my story is complete, but yours is just beginning. The end. Next is a book called A Day So Gray. Words by Marie Lamba and pictures by Aaliyah Marley. And as you listen to this story, listen to how this little girl speaks and how this little girl speaks. There's a big difference in how they see the world and how they talk. And watch out for the cat too. Meow. A day so gray. Wow. This day is so gray. No, it isn't. It's deep, soft brown and shining blue and silver splashes on bright yellow. This field is blob brown. No, it isn't. It's dots of orange and vines of black with sticks of licorice red and poofs of tan. She seems very cheerful. She seems kind of grumpy. Well, the snow is boring white. No, it isn't. It's lines of purple and squiggles of gray. It's gems of twinkling silver with stomps of green. Look, she's even scowling. Bad luck, that cat is black. She's not all black. She's also soft pads of pink and specks of white and eyes glowing yellow green. Plus she's warm and that's a good thing. So is this fire. The fire is orange. I don't like orange. Sheesh, she's never happy. It isn't just orange, it's flashes of red and yellow and sizzling black logs and gray bits of smoke. Well, it is cozy. Yes, yes it is. And so is the blue, green, red blanket. And so is a black, pink, white cat. And so is the brown, white, gray cocoa. And so is the purple and tangerine sunset. And we are cozy too on this day that was so much more than gray. The end. The cat with her cocoa. And the other girl cheered up a little bit too, I think. Our last book today is the three billy goats gruff. How many goats? One, two, three. And they're small, 
medium, and large. And here's the nasty troll with a big red nose and sharp teeth and horns on his head. He looks kind of mean. The three billy goats gruff. Words by Ron Randall and pictures by Gavin Scott. Here we go. Once upon a time, there were three billy goats gruff who lived on a hillside near a river. One, two, three. There was little billy goat gruff. <laughs> Middle Billy Goat Gruff. Ma. And Great Big Billy Goat Gruff. Ma. They ate the grass on the hillside and grew fatter and fatter. One day, the three Billy Goats Gruff looked around and saw that they had eaten all the grass on the hillside. What shall we do now? Little Billy Goat Gruff asked his brothers. If we don't find more grass, we'll all waste away. There's plenty of yummy green grass over there, said Mil Middle Billy Goat Gruff, looking at a meadow on the other side of the river. Yes, said his big brother, Great Big Billy Goat Gruff. All we have to do is cross the wooden bridge and we can eat to our heart's content. Goodness. But the bridge was guarded by a horrible, ugly troll. He was green with a great big head and a bright red nose with a booger. There were warts on his skin and hairs on his chin, and his terrible teeth were long and pointy and yellow, and he was also very. Smelly. P. U. Which one of us will be brave enough to cross that bridge? Great big Billy Goat Gruff asked his brothers. The three Billy Goats Gruff all looked at each other. At last, little Billy Goat Gruff piped up, I'll cross the bridge. And off he went. Down the hillside, trip, trap, trip, trap, he went over the wooden bridge. Can you turn your fingers into goat legs? Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, across the bridge. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? shouted the ugly troll. Oh, it is I, little Billy Goat Gruff, the goat replied, trying not to breathe in the troll's horrible smell. I'm just going over to the meadow to eat the green grass. No, you're not, growled the troll. I'm going to eat you first. And he climbed up onto the little wooden bridge. Oh, no. Little Billy Goat Gruff was very frightened, but he knew what to say. I don't think you'd m I'd make a very good meal for you. Can't you see how little I am? You should wait for my brother, Middle, Middle Billy Goat Gruff. He's much bigger and fatter than me. The troll thought about it. Hmm, all right, he said. You may cross the bridge. So Little Billy Goat Gruff went. Trip, trap, trip, trap across the wooden bridge and skipped into the meadow. As soon as he saw that little Billy Goat Gruff was safe, great big Billy Goat Gruff said to his younger brother, It's your turn now. So, middle Billy Goat Gruff trotted down the hillside. Trip trap, trip trap, trip trap. He went over the wooden bridge. Do you see the troll? Oh, look. The troll's waiting. Oh, poor middle Billy Goat Gruff. 
When he was halfway across, the smelly troll shouted, Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? It is I, middle billy goat gruff, said the goat. I'm just going over the bridge to eat the green grass with my brother on the other side. Oh, no, you're not, shouted the troll. I'm going to eat you first. And he climbed right up onto the little wooden bridge. Middle Billy Goat Gruff was very frightened, but he didn't let the troll see that. There's not much meat on my bones, he said. You should wait for my brother, Great Big Billy Goat Gruff. He is the biggest and fattest of us all, and he would make a much tastier meal for you. Um, all right, said the troll. You may cross the bridge. So, Middle Billy Goat Gruff went. Trip trap, trip trap, trip trap across the wooden bridge to join his brother in the meadow on the other side. At last, it was great big Billy Goat Gruff's turn to cross the bridge. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, went his hooves on the wooden bridge. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? bellowed the troll. It is I! Great big billy goat gruff, I am going to join my brothers to eat the green grass in the meadow. Oh, no, you're not, thundered the troll. You are the biggest, fattest billy goat gruff, and I'm going to eat you. And the smelly troll clambered up onto the bridge. Great big billy goat Gruff was not afraid of the horrible, ugly troll, but the troll was certainly afraid when he saw Great Big Billy Goat Gruff. He tried to run away, but before he could, Great Big Billy Goat Gruff lowered his head, stamped his hooves, and with his Great Big Billy Goat horns, he butted the troll right into the river. The troll went under the water with a great big splash and was never ever seen again. Then Great Big Billy Goat Gruff went trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip over the wooden bridge to join his brothers in the meadow. All three of them ate yummy green grass and they grew bigger and fatter and happier every day. Duh. I hope you enjoyed your stories today. I certainly enjoyed reading them to you. And I will see you later. I love you. Bye.